So I frequently see these builds on YouTube of solar systems that are way more expensive than most of us would ever need, literally $10,000 to $25,000 systems, and most of us think things that are really just a few hundred dollars. So I'm going to show you how I build a system for two fifty, dollars and one fifty of that is actually going to be a 100-watt solar panel that I got from Harbor Freight. The rest of it, less than $100 of it, is actually going to be what I need to maintain the batteries. Um, and on a beautiful day like what you see my Airstream parked in here, it's going to work just perfectly. And this system prevents me from putting any new holes in that skin of my Airstream. And I'm gonna show you how I did that right here. So as you look at the top of my Airstream here, there's places where we could certainly mount a solar panel. The difficulty is there's no place where I can uh, take advantage of anything to run the wires down uh, through an already existing opening such as a vent on the top. Um, just not any that really accommodate that. So I don't wanna be putting a bunch of holes in the top of my Airstream. And so I've come up with a different solution and it's a pretty inexpensive solution and I'm going to get to building that and show you how I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you here the parts I've purchased that are going to be everything I need to install a complete solar system for my travel trailer, which the one I'm currently installing it on is a 2007 Airstream Safari 23 foot. And what I'm going to show you is that for 250 bucks, I can get everything I need to build a complete uh, system for this Airstream. Now when I say a complete system, I'm not talking about one of these mega systems with a bunch of Battleborn batteries that you see people investing 10, 15, sometimes 20,000 or more dollars into. I'm talking about a simple $250 investment and really to just maintain my batteries, and I'm going to discuss that, it's about a hundred bucks. So let me show you what I've purchased in order to do that. Now <clears throat> start with, I went to Home Depot and I've got some random accessories here that I purchased. That total right there was $20. Um, actually, it was, uh, if we look at the receipt here, it was $25.88, but there are a couple things on there that I needed for other reasons. So, but this stuff that I'm gonna use, it's uh, $20. So, um, then I went to Harbor Freight, uh, solar charge regulator. $20. It's $19.99 at Harbor Freight. So that was $20. I got, two of these panels right here, um, which are, I believe, four and seven eighths wide, and I think they're roughly 13 inches long. Now, this is going to be to maintain my system, two of these. I got one. I went back and bought the other one. Um, the first one I got, um, as you look at it right here, it is $15 right there. And then I went back and got another one, and you can see it there. It's $14.99, plus I got some zip ties for $2.99. So I'm, I'm adding everything in here. This is total cost. So, uh, I did go back and get a second one of these after I looked at them in a hook bolt. Moving down the line, I also purchased this. This is a $12 uh, six-piece solar connection kit because um, I think I'm going to use a couple of these extra pieces, the main one being this cord right here. So if we add this back up from what we've purchased, uh, we've got, um, let's go, well, let's do it this way. Let's go 15 and 15 before tax. So that's 30 plus 20 is 50 plus uh, 20 up here, so 70, and then plus 12 is 82, plus 3, $85. So for $85, I'm going to build this system for my Airstream that's going to monitor it, which is going to be most people who have their RV. This is going to be most all you need, and I'm going to explain that as we hook it up. Now, so to start with, this is my battery box, and you can see I've got two X2 batteries from Batteries Plus. Now, the dilemma with this battery box is if you look, I don't have a lot of height there, and I don't have a lot of width to give. And so the problem with these batteries is they're only 76 amp hours. Now for this smaller travel trailer with having two of these, that's pretty good because you figure if it's 50% discharge, then I actually get 76 amp hours, which is much as I need to run the basic things that uh, we need relative to the periodic use of lights to run the fan for the refrigerator, to run the pump for the water and to turn the heat on and off and to uh, ignite the propane uh, to keep the refrigerator going. So this is really all I need in here. I don't want to do anything that's going to change the uh, skin on my Airstream significantly. So, but this box right here, this cover that lifts out and lifts up here, just has this plastic uh, top to it. I'm not as worried about so this. So to start with, as you look at the top surface of this cover, this cover is exactly the flat surface on top. If you can see it there is nine and a half inches. And so since it's exactly nine and a half inches, um, the two batteries that I have from 
uh, Harbor, Harbor Freight are each four and seven eighths, so they should fit on this top surface exactly. These two centered on here on this top surface like this, and one of the things you'll see is that they've got this blinking blue indicator light, which indicates that they're both uh, charging currently. But if you look at it, you got a little bit of sun poking through, but it's a pretty cloudy day. I would say a mostly cloudy day, definitely. And uh, we're still getting a little bit of charge here and the sun's actually up that direction. Um, so we're facing a little bit to the northwest right now and these are actually still picking up charge anyway. But what I'm gonna do is fasten through here, 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 and here. Uh, go ahead and fasten these in. These are each 1.5 watts. So as I wire them together, they're gonna be three watts and I'm not gonna wire them in series. You wouldn't wanna do that. These are gonna be wired in parallel. But if we had one piece that went across this whole cover like this, my guesstimate is based on this as being a total of three, we probably could get something if it was all glass on top here, probably something in the eight to 10 watt range. See, since I've got these positioned nice and straight and even when I want where I want them before I drill them, I'm just gonna use a little bit of painter's tape just to kind of secure them in place so they don't slide while I'm drilling. Okay, them. Now you can see my holes are all at one quarter inch there. There's one, two, three, for. So now what I'm going to go ahead, so I'm actually going to use some rubber washers and some metal washers on these with some quarter inch bolts and lock nuts. I'm using one and a quarter inch bolts on these and I'll show you how that all goes together. So to protect these um, uh, holes from leaking, here's how this is going to go. It's going to go, if you can see, it's got a bolt, then I've got, so I've got stainless steel bolt, stainless steel washer, and then I've got rubber washer. And then on the other side, I've got rubber washer. It's gonna go down. And then on the other side, I'm gonna put stainless steel washer and a uh, locking nut. So here's what that looks like with the first one locked into place. As you can see, it's there, it's sturdy. It's, it's staying with that hood. As you can see, the blue light is flashing there. So it's picking up charge from the sunlight. And on the back here, so we can see we've got stainless steel washer and uh, stainless steel nylon nut to lock it in place. So um, if you're wondering about that, these nuts, they're uh, 7 16 and these are just one and a quarter inch bolts that I used along with stainless steel quarter inch. Um, these are stainless steel quarter inch uh, washers, both the, the stainless steel ones and then the rubber washers are also quarter inch as well. This is what they look like on there. We're getting a little bit of sunshine right now, so they're actually picking up pretty good. And if you look at it, you, I don't know if you can make that out or not, but the, there's a line right here again, because we're facing kind of a uh, little bit northwesterly, but we're still getting some pretty good uh, sunlight here. And we're definitely getting charge into both of them. Now, my next question is, since I'm linking these in parallel, is do I want to link them first and then run them down through a channel? Or do I want to go ahead and uh, run them both down through separate channels and then link them together inside, which I think is what I'm going to do here. So I think I'm going to drill separate holes for each of these to pull down into and then link them the other way. Well, this actually worked out better than I thought I would. Now, I made the holes for these grommets really close to where these wires came out with this thicker protective part of the wire. And then what I did was I pulled them down through and they actually sealed themselves. So I don't think I even actually need to add any caulking right there. I think that's going to do real well just as it is. If you look at it on the underside here, you can see then these come through. And then what I'm going to do is link them white to white and black to black. And then I'm going to link them to another corner. But this will ultimately be my solar setup here. So you can see the sun shining pretty good as I'm casting a pretty nice shadow here. And this is my 100 watt panel. And then what I want to show you is right here, you can see the blue lights are flashing. Now I have these two wired together. And if we look, I've mostly set these up here. We're not using those solar panels right now, but if you look, you can see the yellow lights on, which says charging. So what I've got is I've just got these temporarily taped together with some electrical tape. I'm going to actually splice those together um, formally with uh, some uh, waterproof connections. And so what that'll do is then that cord will then run to the charge controller, which will sit inside the box here and should um, charge those batteries. Now, if we're gonna be able to see, I'm gonna tip that up. The yellow light uh, down there by my finger, but it's on, it says charging. And I'll lift this up, the light's gonna go on as I tip that, or the light's gonna go off. I've just temporarily taped this in with blue tape. What I'm gonna do is finish it off uh, using some uh, VHB tape to hold this in place right here. And then I've got some redundant cord here right now, but what I'm gonna do is let it run down here 
and I am going to let it come out right here on the side. What I'm actually going to do here is uh, use this spot right here where there's this grommet hole, and I'm going to dribble, drill a hole for that, run wires through, and actually connect them uh, directly to the terminals on top here. I'm not going to use these clips because they'll come off while you're uh, bouncing, but for today, I'm pleased that we got it set up, pleased that it works. So this uh, is my actual uh, grommet here that went into that spot. And what I've done is, I, again, I've drilled it with a hole, the hole's 5 16 and then I put this quarter inch uh, rubber grommet inside the plastic grommet, and that'll go back in. On one end, I have my SAE connection that will go back into the solar controller. And then on the other end, what I've done with these two cut wires is I put a couple loops on them, if you can see that there. And then what I did to the loops was I soldered them uh, completely. So they should hold, help hold those in place when I connect those to the battery terminal. These two little guys right here. And like I say, they're wired uh, together. <clears throat> they run right here together with clips. I uh, decided to zip tie this extra wire just in case you never know what I might need it for. And hanging in here doesn't hurt anything. It runs over to here. It connects right there to the solar. And then the battery comes out this way and goes down and around the side. And I've got redundant cord here right now too until I figure out exactly how I want to lay that in directly. But for the time being, when I shut this, we'll see the lights on now. See if we can get it. You can, there you go. You can see the little yellow light because we're aiming toward that westerly sun. And this should, while this vehicle is just parked, maintain my batteries and keep charge from anything that they might lose as they're just sitting so here. For this system to maintain the longevity of my batteries and their quality working condition and to charge on these solar days, it's $15 here, $15 here. That gives us $30. Uh, the charge controller was $20. That gives us 50. We had uh, $12 in the extra cords that we purchased for it. That's 62 and about $20 plus or minus of uh, uh, hardware. Um, so like, you know, these little bolts that I showed you with the washers here. So for a total of well under $100, this system that if you just want to maintain your batteries while you're storing them, it's less than an $80 investment for the $800 worth of batteries that I have in here. Very well worth it. And the nice thing about this is you can see, other than a couple little holes in the plastic top here, which I covered up really well, and this fits really nicely, um, couldn't ask for doing much more, and I've not touched the skin of my Airstream. So if you're looking to do solar and you're saying, hey, what do I really need solar for? First off, if you're not gonna be a full-time person, the number one thing is to maintain your batteries, and you can do it with a system like this very simply. So, and I wouldn't necessarily say that you shouldn't go to a more expensive system, but my gosh, every video I see, somebody's putting in a 10, 15, $20,000 battery system. Why would you wanna do that if that isn't gonna be what you really need it for? Now, I'm sure like a lot of the rest of you, I'm real envious of these super solar setups people have where they have half a dozen or more panels on their roof. They have half a dozen battle-borne batteries to go with it. And those are, of course, lithium ion batteries, but, for me, as it turns out, I'm not full time. It doesn't make that much sense. When we do go camping, um, we're frequently off grid for four or five days at a time. We always take the generator, the generator with us. What I'd like to do is run that a little bit less. And so when I had solar on the roof, I never really had to worry about it charging or maintaining my batteries while it was in storage. Now, I so always had solar on my Lance Travel Trailers. I had the stock solar that came with it. I recently purchased a 2007 Airstream. It did not have stock solar reason I'm showing both of these things here right now is what I want you to look at is if I set that Thunderbolt down, look at where that sits. That's right at the top edge. Look at where my uh, Predator sits in relationship to that. It's just below it. So I can set these two things here. When I'm packed up, I'll have this braced in. In this case, this folds out. And then when I open my tonneau cover, it goes right over top of these two things. And as you can see up there, with just a little bit of space to spare for that Thunderbolt. So really nice, really happy with it.